My name is Athena Smena, born and raised in Kansas City, Kansas, and I currently live in Kansas City, Missouri. Working on environmental justice without an equity lens creates this divide in our community. For one, we're all in this together. And when we start approaching environmental justice and climate change without really talking about it being a human issue and instead focusing more on the environmental issue, I think that's where we lose people's understanding of how it's connected to them directly, how it directly impacts their health, how it directly impacts their community, their neighbors, their family. In the end, this is what we're all here for, is to be able to take care of one another and empower each other. The way I became more and more involved with environmental justice and really wanting to do my part and taking care of our of our community is that I've been fortunate enough to be um, provided with so much growing up here. I have constantly been trying to find ways of how to give back to the community. And with my nursing background, I was able to help find that bridge between how environmental justice and healthcare go one and one together. I've been able to be fortunate enough to work with Beto and his team in Clean Air Now. Basically, Clean Air Now started because of a community need, because of a community concern with industries causing pollution and also the railways being right by lots of homes and, and neighborhoods. Clean Air Now has been able to step up and provide air monitors within the community and not only placing them, but working with the community. So for one, we're really focused on educating and spreading awareness about the issue at hand. The way we do this is not only telling people what to do, but also involving them and hearing from their concerns, right? So we want to make sure that we're meeting them in the middle, helping to address their issues. And then from there, we take it to the air monitors are able to provide us with great data that are uh, factual, that are based off of the family's homes and where they live and what they're directly being exposed to. That is then shared with the government that will directly impact policy change. Policy change is important because that is how we make a movement. We can start from on the ground with education awareness and empowering people to be involved, to have a voice, which is so important. And then from there, that voice will be heard. That voice will be heard from the government. And they'll realize that this is an important issue for the community. And uh, they'll be able to make some of those changes that really only benefit the people that live there. It benefits their health, it benefits their neighborhood and feeling valuable and being part of a community. Social determinants of health is a very popular topic, but it's sometimes misunderstood. Social determinants of health make such an impact. And, and unfortunately, it says a lot when your zip code determines the length of time that you will live. It determines how soon you're going to die based off of your zip code. Social determinants of health come up within that zip code um, population where based off of your education, based off of your income, based off of the color of your skin, this zip code is going to be at higher risk for these different types of health morbidities and problems. And it surely doesn't help that oftentimes we see within our communities of color, especially that they have more difficulty having access to good health equity. They are limited by, uh, we can go into transportation, uh, not being able to have transportation. We can go into having food deserts. We can go into redlining and showing the big difference from one neighborhood to another. One neighborhood has a higher percentage of tree canopies, which just means you get more shading. It's um, it's cleaner air that's provided back into that neighborhood compared to the other neighborhood that you hardly see any trees. You see a lot of abandoned homes, homes that need great repair, and it causes uh, utilities to go up. And so families are struggling to not only maintain their jobs, but also maintain the home, which is also making them sick. And when they're sick, they have to miss their job. They have to miss school, which directly impacts their income. It directly impacts their education. And they don't have a way to get to a healthcare system. They don't have a way to get to primary care. And that's why we see higher rates of asthma in uh, certain zip codes compared to others. And those zip codes that I mentioned that have more uh, people of color, more people like me, more people that are just trying to also live in their community and now they're faced with even greater challenges 
which makes it even more difficult to make environmental justice a priority because they're too focused trying to get to work. They're too focused trying not to be sick and trying to just get by. Um, and this isn't to lower anyone and say that they can't be active. It just means that some people have to overcome more barriers than others. When it comes to COVID, it has really brought forward this great divide that we've noticed um, already in the minority and um, people of color community. Why is it that minorities are at greater risk for being hospitalized? from COVID? Why is it that people of color are at greater risk of actually dying, having that severe reaction from COVID? And when I'm thinking about the air monitors and where they're located in our communities, those are the same communities that have that increased risk or higher rates, I mean, of asthma. And those are also the same communities that are having higher uh, rates of COVID being in the community. Oftentimes, just coming from the Latino perspective, the homes are multi-generational. There's usually grandma living there with grandpa, mom and dad, or there might be aunt and uncle. The Latino community is all about family. They're all about um, taking care of one another and being there for each other. And what we see is that unfortunately, if someone has COVID within the household, our recommendation would be like, oh, just go and isolate. You'll be fine. Don't don't um, interact with the rest of the family. Well, that's not a possibility for, for some of our families. And it's not a possibility when their homes may need more repairs and there's not that good circulation of air that really helps to clear out uh, the dirty air that we call it that has COVID and then also be able to move um, the air circulation in the house. It doesn't help that they're right next to railways and that the higher pollution outside is directly already inhibiting or affecting their health, that they're more likely to get sick. They're more likely to have a bad reaction to COVID. And so that's what we've been noticing a lot as well. Everyone benefits from environmental justice and health equity and all together in uplifting those communities that may experience some more of those barriers that may have more of those inequities, I think are is just important to everyone because family is number one. And if we could just put aside some of those differences, um, we can really come together. I always go back to this quote from Martin Luther King, and it says that injustice anywhere is a threat um, to justice everywhere. So injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. One community, one population, one area that is struggling, that is facing additional barriers, that is facing um, a, a life where they don't have access to clean air, clean water, clean land. Those are human rights, I believe, just like healthcare. Healthcare is a human right and having access to those things are all human rights. And I believe we can all be on the same stance that we all have the human right to have access to clean air, clean water, and land. Samples of environmental justice that people don't directly or automatically think of is when communities are able to build up grocery stores in their neighborhoods or close by because of the food deserts. We oftentimes don't realize that we have access to gas stations quicker than we do have access to grocery stores and organic foods and foods that aren't uh, full of uh, pesticides or just processed foods. So having access to that helps really the community and other ideas that have already been implemented as just doing weatherization on homes. And although people don't think about, oh, I'm getting an upgrade to my house, you're actually also helping the environment because you're not having to adjust that temperature as often. Uh, you are also helping to control pests from coming into the home. So it's just another way of how the community is doing their part of how organizations are there to assist and help make those improvements in the community.